Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to go over the story for the example, lay out the equations for the example, and then implement it in MATLAB, okay? So in this story, we're actually not going to be uh, dealing with the Bayesian Ninja himself. Yeah, I know, so sad. But we're actually in the forest in this story, and we're going to be monitoring and talking, see what's going on with our quail friend, or the Bayesian Ninja's quail friend, right? Because, you know, the Bayesian Ninja's got some weird issues with the quail. Look at that tree, is transparent, apparently. Um, and the quail's running around in the forest, uh, doing things that, like, quails do. And apparently it's a miniature forest, and there's, like, a quail in a miniature forest. <laughs> um, anyways, there he is. He's kind of going around, and he's doing what, like, all magical quail do. He's, like, uh, I don't know, freeing caterpillars from, like, magical evil monkey curses. I don't know. Um, and he's walking around, and all of a sudden, the, out of nowhere, come the Frequentesian Ninjas. And if you don't remember where they are, you can watch my video. I think it's the Markov process video. And there's the uh, Frequentesian Ninjas. And that's spelled like this. Frequentesian Ninjas. And um, they are the sworn enemies, if you remember, of the Bayesian Ninjas. You could look up that beef between the two of them online. But uh, basically... They all they pretty much have beef with everybody, and they got beef with these quails. They don't like quails. Uh, in the past, well, it was actually kind of the quails' fault. Like in the past, the quails used to like throw like quail eggs at these ninjas. Actually, that's kind of morbid now that I think about that. Uh, anyways, okay, so whatever they they throw quail eggs at them in some weird morbid uh, re way, and uh, so the frequency ninjas don't like them, and they're gonna definitely try to grab this quail. So like, but they also know the quail's real agile and real smart and stuff. So like, first they kind of like start to like stretch out and stuff because they don't want to like pull a muscle. So they're like stretching out and stuff like that. And the quail, well, the quail starts to meditate. So let's draw the quail. The quail, that they're like the real deal. They don't mess around. So he's like sits down, and like meditates, and maybe he drops his like little quail feather back, and he starts like meditating and thinking things and. What he's going to do is he's going to try to generate a non-linear way of behaving and getting away from these guys. Because he knows most of these guys here, they're all very linear. They're students of the Frequentesi Ninja Clan. And so he thinks he get away from them with these moves, right? And so what he does is he generates this model. It's going to be X of T. This is our process model or our state update model. Where X of T equals X of T minus 1 over 2 plus 25 X over 1 plus x squared plus 8 cosine 1.2 times time minus 1 and then plus our noise n. Yeah, that's a that's a big nasty equation and actually that borrowed from an equation used for like a lot of equations for modeling like testing nonlinear systems and I think it's for like a growth model. We'll talk about that more in the next video a little bit. But basically, it's a very nasty nonlinear function, okay? Well, maybe not very nasty, but anyways, you get the idea. And then also, this quail uses a special ability of hallucination, right? They could mess with your minds. Maybe they're messing with the Bayesian ninja's mind. I don't know. But they could create these illusions of where they're at. And so in this case, this will be the observation that the ninjas get, right? And so Z of T, of course, is going to depend on our estimate X of T. And that in, that, in this case, it's going to be x of t squared over 20 plus that noise variable. And so this is going to be our model that we're going to use. This is our state update, and this is our measurement update. Okay? And so if we look at the way this plays out, like I say, we just draw a little example here in the corner. If we look at the way this plays out. Say this is like time, and this is like x position. The quail is going to kind of be like all over the place in some weird nonlinear fashion, right? And so as these like student ninjas try to chase them, maybe one's like, oh, I'm purely linear, I can't get it, figure it out. And then like another one's like this, or this one's like, you know, like just some kind of kind of parabolic move. Anyways, they can't really follow him, right? But lo and behold, there is the, they're out training actually, and they're out with the master Frequentesian ninja, the, uh, well, that's his name, master Frequentesian ninja. And he actually has, four ends to his, uh, uh, you know, face, face kerchief, face mask. Anyways, and so you don't know what he's facing, or maybe he's facing forward, who knows. And he actually, he knows a lot about nonlinear systems, and he models the particle filter. He uses that system here, and he tries to follow the quail using his particle filter. 
And what we're going to look at is, you know, how many particles does this master ninja need to use? How much computation does he need to really accurately chase down this quail? Okay? So let's break down how it's going to all look when we implement it. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our um, temporal plot. This will be time, right? And this will be position x, right? And we're going to have our initial, like, just say we start at time 1 or time 0, whatever. And we got our initial prior distribution of where we think the quail's at, right? This is what this is the mind of the master frequentesian ninja we're looking at here. And these are his estimates of where the quail's at. It's on some Gaussian distribution or whatever. We know what it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these functions. We're going to use this first function to update the possible states for each particle. So we're going to go here. And we're just going to update what the states are going to be at the next time point. And those will all be here. And there's going to be some update based upon that, that nonlinear function, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to input those values into our uh, um, measurement update, right? And so we input those values into our measurement update. It'll be these values that are blue now. And they're going to be obviously in some different location because it's x squared over, over 20, so it's going to be some other nonlinear thing. But basically, you're going to get these new observation values. And then we're going to get an actual observation. Where, you know, where, is the, where did it look like the quail was, right? And that's going to be some value z. Now what we're going to do is we're going to now, we got all these values, and we're going to generate the weights for them. Now because it's Gaussian, let's draw this over here, like we said before, because it's Gaussian, this is z and this is the probability, right? And then this is our simulated values, of me simulated measurements, simulated observations. And here's the actual one, right? And then we have our example one, and then we look at a Gaussian distribution around that. We'll call this z hat. What we're going to do is we're going to implement, the way we calculate this z value is from the equation of a Gaussian distribution. So that's going to look like this. Simplify because we're looking, again, r is our variance, not our standard deviation, but r will be our, this is our standard deviation, but r is our variance, right? So we write out the equation for this, it'll be the square root of 2 pi r times e to the negative z minus z hat squared over 2 and then the variance. That's all, like e to that. Okay, I, I kind of drew that too big. But so what this is saying is that if we set our mean value as this estimate, what is the value of z, our actual value? And this is going to giving us that value on a normalized distribution. So this will give us a value, and we repeat this function over and over again for each of the estimates. It'll give us some weight value to each of these. So now all these will have some weight value, and I'm just going to draw a line to represent possibly like the weights on them or something. Then we resample these values based upon that weighted distribution. And now we'll pick like the best estimate, and then we'll repeat this and go to the next time step, and the next, and the next, and the next. And we're going to see how many particles, you know, we have too little, maybe 10, or, you know, over 9,000, <laughs> or something like that, and see how, how much does a frequentesian master ninja need a model, how much does it need to compute in order to do a, do, do a good job of making this estimate. So what we have here is we got our two functions, we have our weight update function, and we'll implement these iteratively for each of the time points and for each of the estimates, and see how that thing performs in MATLAB.